Okay, this argument is very difficult. Um, it says all Pink Floyd albums are prog rock albums and no Pink Floyd albums are unartistic. Hence, it is false that no prog rock albums are artistic. Now, what we should pay attention to is that we clearly have what is effectively a term and its term complement. Um, we have a negation. It says it is false that. Um, and we have a term and term of complement that are not um, themselves noun phrases. So to word this um, ordinary language, to put this ordinary language argument into standard form is going to require some work. Now, uh, we always begin with our conclusion. And the conclusion in this case is it is false that no prog rock albums are artistic. So the temptation might be um, to write something like no SRP, um, but we're told that that's false. So we can refer to our square of opposition. And if we're told that the E form of a proposition is false, we know that it's um, then that the I form of the proposition is true and that those are logically equivalent statements to say that some SRP is logically equivalent to saying it is false that no SRP. So since we're given the claim it is false that no SRP, we're going to treat the conclusion as asserting some SRP. That would be the um, standard form uh, of that non-standard form proposition. Okay. Now we know what our major term is and our minor term. And the major premise contains the major term. So we want to, oops, we need to fill in our term variables. So S stands for prog rock albums. And P stands for artistic albums. Because artistic is not itself a noun phrase or noun, so we have to convert it into a noun phrase. And given the context of the argument, artistic albums is sufficient. So now we look to see what, where, uh, which premise contains the term artistic albums. And the answer is none of them do. This premise uh, has nothing um, about artistic albums. This premise does not either, although it does talk about unartistic albums. Uh, for all intents and purposes, that is the term complement of artistic albums. So we can recognize that this proposition has the form um, no M, where M stands for Pink Floyd albums. No M are non-P because P was defined as artistic albums and this says unartistic, meaning unartistic albums. So our choices, this is not a good, uh, a good option, right? Because um, no M R non P is not a standard form proposition. If we plug that in on a line here, we would end up having four terms, S, P, M, and non P. So we have to get rid of the term complement, non, the term non P. Now we can do so using the um, operation that we called obversion. When we obvert a proposition, we change the quality of the proposition, so whether it is affirmative or negative, without changing the quantity, and then we replace the predicate term with its term complement. That's exactly what we need. We need to replace non-P with P. And so to, to complete the obversion, we convert no to all, because that keeps the quantity, the universal quantity, but it changes the quality. Now, what this means then is our major premise needs to be stated as all M R P. All Pink Floyd albums are artistic albums. That is logically equivalent to no Pink Floyd albums are, are, are non-artistic albums. Uh, because obversion is a valid form of, uh, a valid way in which we can um, 
modify a proposition regardless of which proposition form we start with. Now, the, ma the minor premise is then all M Pink Floyd albums are S prog rock albums. We can check. Did we use both terms twice? We did. There's only three terms. Each proposition is in standard form. We're good to go. Now we have to diagram it. We have two universal premises, so it doesn't matter which one we start with. Um, I'll diagram all M, R, P. We always diagram crescent moon shapes or football shapes when we're shading. And then the second premise, the minor premise, is all M, R, S. So we overlap here. I'm still shading a crescent shape. And then I check to see whether the information expressed in my conclusion is depicted in the diagram. And it's not. This is a particular conclusion. I would need to see an X somewhere. But we now know that when we have, uh, when we arrive, uh, when we have a particular conclusion and it is invalid in this way, we test to see whether adopting the Aristotelian perspective would allow us to reach the conclusion that the argument is conditionally valid. And the way that we do that again is you go through your three term categories and you ask the question, if I assume this is a real category with exactly one member, would I have a valid argument? Let's start with P. If I assume P has one member, that does not help me because I do not know where to place that single P. Could be here, could be here, could be here, because all of those are places where a P could be. If I assume that S has one member, I'm in the same position. I don't know whether that S would be here, here, or here. Hence, um, assuming that S is a real category does not um, allow me to conclude that the argument is conditionally valid. However, if I assume that M is a real category and has one member, it would have to be in this area. The other areas of M are excluded from possibility. So, this argument is conditionally valid um, on the assumption that M is a real category. And that's how you solve that difficult problem. Um, this exact uh, uh, argument will not be on future versions of the exam. Um, however, um, one sufficiently similar to it of equal difficulty will be. Um, so please make sure that you're able to um, properly diagram, uh, assign term variables, resolve uh, the use of term complements, and resolve the use of um, contradictory um, indicators.